All right, guys, here we are. I'm Wyoming. With me is Wardy. Yo, what's up? <laughs> I'm so hyped. I'm so ready to cast. All right. I said like three times as much last night than I have for the past few nights. So like my energy inside is like overflowing. Didn't you sleep on someone's floor? Not last night. Last night I slept oh, in their bed. Okay, the nights before I slept on the floor. So like it's like, right. you know, I'm really, I'm really ready. Like All super right, ready. Well, guys, I hope you're going to enjoy this game. We're going to go right into it. We are here in the bottom left of New Gettysburg. We have the Pink Zerg from Team DK. He's Tomicus. I don't know how to do like all the fancy like. Uh, you I know, think it's page up or page, page down. Page up and page down. Where yeah, even but is you have that? to enable numlock on this oh keyboard. Oh my god! Oh, there uh, we go. We're right. learning. Okay, we... we got we got rotations going now. All right, we're learning. All right. right. Oops. Now now my middle mouse button's stuck. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is gonna this is a test, isn't it? All right, to the bottom right hand side from Team Liquid, our Blue Terran player is Euphermal. All who right. is probably alongside Harstam one of the favorites for the tournament. But Harstam just had a lot of trouble against Zane. That was uh, that was one close series, I have to say, especially the last game, which I mean, the first game which was just Harstam just got smashed, and third game he almost got smashed, not entirely. But it was still... Uh, he almost got smashed. I love that phrase. Like, yeah. he almost got completely killed, but he didn't. Like, so sick. Mm -hmm. All right. So that w that just proves that even though these players are definitely, you know, full-timers, they're definitely the professionals, the, the favorites. It doesn't mean they necessarily are going to be the ones that will... Uh, Easily walk out with a bunch of money in a trophy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everyone who's here at this competition has probably like got a fairly like I think obviously like you thermal host and we know they have the favorites, but it would, it's no, it's not out of this world crazy to expect them maybe losing some series here and there, especially in the groups and so on. Um, obviously, Hoston did pick up the win. You thermal playing Tomicus here. Yeah, I mean, Tomicus for me is probably the biggest underdog in this tournament. He came through a group which I didn't actually expect him to get through. I think he took down Space Marine in that in the process. So that was like for me really surprising seeing him take down like Space Marine and stuff. Um, yeah. And Tomicus is someone I've known for like four years in terms of StarCraft 2. Like I've casted him in some of the first events I ever ran, my weekly events that I ran. He's been around for so long. And to actually see him start doing better and better, because he didn't just qualify for this lately. He actually qualified for WSG offline finals in oh. Europe, which is really sick for Tomicus because he came through like the Central European Qualifier, which is like over Raynor, over Funk. They're nice. really good GM players. So this guy's really been on the up lately, and he used to be known for a very aggressive Zerg style, but now he's like super macro oriented. He can do so well. It's uh, kind of crazy. So yeah, yeah right. it's it's going to be interesting to see how he plays here today. Yeah, I actually uh, talked to Tomokus before this match just to see uh, like how he felt about the matchup, about the patch and everything. And he wasn't all very confident against uh, Euthermal, uh, up to the point where he was thinking like, well, I got to figure out how I'm going to beat my next opponent. Uh, he doesn't like Reapers. I can well, imagine a lot of Zergs don't. Yeah, I mean, he. I actually watched the videos for this. He insta vetoed Frozen Temple and Galactic Process. He was just like, you know what? I don't even want to know what map you're going to veto because I'm just going to veto the Reaper maps and I know you're not. So, yeah. I mean, that's to be fair. Like, Euphil was like the best player ever when it comes to Reapers. Uh, not ever, but you know, like he's one of the very best. <laughs> so you do not want to mess around is you film is going to go for something very interesting here which is oh. going to be either battle cruisers which he's been doing a lot i actually think it is going to be battle cruisers he's been doing this a lot lately on his stream it's a pretty legit way to play nowadays with the new patch like you can teleport the first ones in you can harass with them you model cannon down tech structures it's stupidly good are like, you for real good. it's super i've right. never seen so anyone do when that when you get free battle cruisers what you can do is you scan find oh. the spire nice pick and if the there. spire isn't up soon enough you, you mod a cat in the spire and he just loses the game because he has no anti air. Yeah. It's really stupid. What about spores though? They Spor don't do yeah, I mean, sure, but it's a battle cruiser. Like, it never dies. <laughs> Did he just fake cloak? I think he's faking uh, cloak. Yeah, I mean, he might go banshees then battle cruisers. Like, there's a few different ways you can do the build. Okay, he's, he's gonna got money for a battle cruiser. Oh my he's god. Definitely gonna he's definitely going to play He's making a battle cruiser. Yeah, it's happening. It, it, this is like genuinely like a build in the current meta game. Like, in, in all of my years of StarCraft, I don't. Think You've I never cast ever... a battle cruiser? Ne well, I've cast a battle cruiser, but never yeah. a battle cruiser first build. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that is pretty weird. Like, maybe once I've cast like a proxy battle cruiser, maybe once someone's done something like that. But like, seriously, this is fairly common on the ladder right now. So yeah. not too much of a surprise. You feel like he's actually streaming. He said like, "Hey, man, like I did this build as a meme, and it's actually really good. Like, I'm going up against like nurture, and I'm just wrecking him with battle cruisers. Like, it's not even funny." This is this patch is like the meme patch because we on the other side of Terran uh, aspects, we have player. I, mean, I think it was Nathanius who decided to do this, where you open up early ravens and you just continuously drop uh, auto turrets in yeah. your opponent's it's mineral really, line. No, but it's actually really good. Like, 
And because mech is a little bit better now, these sort of openings are kind of legit, because you can just go into mech behind it. You can see, obviously, you film right now, his mineral dump and his hellions, but outside of this, like, as he goes on, like, his extra gas is up, he'll put down more factories, he'll add on siege tanks and whatever else he feels he needs, so... It's uh, it's pretty, it's 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 pretty, That's, it's pretty he's sick. He's finished the battle cruiser. It, it just warped into the left side of the map, I think. Did it really? Oh, nice. He's gonna harass with it straight away. Like, it's like so sick. Like queens just don't kill this like well, at all. They do it's have crazy. a lot of rage. Yamato cannon, bro. Oh. Get gone, queen. Isn't that oh. brutal? You're like a queen, like trying to inject hatcheries, and all of a sudden there's battle cruisers, Yamato, and you. The thing is, there's no response well, to this from Hellions to the third. There's so like, much stuff dying. Yeah, so many like, drones being roasted right now. Ah, there you go. Oh, this is like brutal, like Tomicus is just straight up dead from one battle cruiser. Like he doesn't even need the second and third one. He doesn't even like, need the battle cruiser. Yeah. The hell is just, just killing his entire economy. This is crazy, like this is just game right away. You feel Battle Cruiser Hellion! What more do you need? I am so going to ladder this when I get home. This is hilarious. The thing is though, like, I feel as though Tomicus, when he sees the tech lab nowadays, should just straight away go oh, for a there's a road counter attack, I suppose. But there's another I mean, battle cruiser yeah, popping out. There's like another battle cruiser. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> It's uh, pretty disgusting. <laughs> this battle cruiser might actually die. Its teleport isn't up for like another few seconds, oh, so he is gonna lose one no. battle cruiser. I always Salute feel the battle cruiser. I always feel as though the battle cruiser should just like do damage when it hits the ground as well. This oh, BC will defend. Awesome. I mean, there's no way these roaches do enough damage. No. I don't like this from Tommy because like he does all the roaches, and I can understand he maybe thought this was Banshee or something, but. I really feel as though, like, when you see this tech lab uh, starport nowadays, you really oh, have come to on, just you're go for a losing way too many roaches here. This has been silly. Yeah, I mean, he's just not going to oh, do enough damage. He's losing his heli. Yeah, like, it seems like Tomicus' only shot is just doing a heli, and, uh, I mean, roach all in or something. Uh, like I mean, even that, he's just not going to do enough. He's on like 30. Actually, Ufim was lost a lot more than I thought. Yeah. But I mean, still, he's got battle cruisers. Like, yeah. eventually, it will just clean up everything. Like, you know, he's got more units on the way out. He's in a completely fine position. His third base is up here as well. So his fit base keeps on building, like, he's, he's completely fine. Tomicus is at 29 supply and 9 drones. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th this game's <laughs> over. Like, as soon as those Hellions start doing damage, this game is over. Like, these roaches are never going to do enough. Like, even if they kill, like, 20 workers, it's not enough. If they kill 30 workers, it's not enough, because he has triple CC behind it. Mm -hmm. Like, there is no way you do enough beep, damage beep, here as Tomicus beep, beep, to realistically beep. stay in this game. There's just absolutely no way. Oh, second battle cruiser. Yeah, GG! I, I love it! I love it! I love battle it! It's amazing! I mean, they're not broken, it's just, I think a lot of people don't know how to play against them just yet. You know, it's fairly Clearly. fresh in the meta game. The, the map, uh, the patch has been out, like, oh, we, I guess, we have like to make the next uh, game, by the way. We have to... Yeah. We host it? Yeah. What map? Uh, they, they mentioned it in chat, I believe. Frost? Uh, or, Zelen is our admin, he's gonna mention it. Second map is Frost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Alright, so... I just have to say, like, the, the post-patch dream is real. This is better than anything I could have expected at the tournament, because it's been a few days since the patch, so not everyone is all up-to-date on the meta, and now we get to see the new meta take effect, and it's it's better than I could have expected in any cha in, in any way. It's not even a battlecruiser rush, you know? This is just it's a regular 1-1-1 build. build into a battlecruiser. Genuinely built. Oh my god, my head's all over. My hair's like all over the place. Oh, I'm really... sorry. I'm sorry. Your hair's not. Your hair <laughs> not, is not in the most the optimal. Popped on camera with bad hair. Mm. Right. We're gonna invite player. Oh. Well, I mean, I, I could put our audience on screen, but I'm not sure if everyone would love that. Why can't I invite them? Uh, maybe either not in the same channel. It's Why good I have it? these friends in my fr these professional players in my friends list, I guess. Someone because it's offline. Oh, that's not good. Right. Hang on. We're gonna sort this out. Did you notice this keyboard? Have you used this keyboard? This keyboard feels like it's got delay. Like when I type, all the letters like show up like, <laughs> like a second later. Like, you, yeah, yeah, I know yeah? what you mean. It's got I think that's a window setting though. It's genuinely got a delay. Oh, huh. that's the first time I've seen that ever. Really? Yeah, I, I've never had a keyboard that literally delays its presses. Like, hmm. it's pretty intense. I uh, I recently went full sellout and bought the same keyboard as Loco, and uh, it's, what it's pretty awesome. Hmm? What keyboard? Uh, are we allowed to talk about non-sponsored brands uh, keyboards? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. It's not this keyboard. What does it rhyme with? It, it rhyme with. Uh... Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> 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 what keyboard do I have again? <laughs> you have to remember first. All right. All right. Um, we're gonna be uh, going into this. Our players are ready. You it's expensive. Went one up. I'm actually looking for a new keyboard. It's so tough. Like. 
to actually find a keyboard you like. That's like the right layout, does the right switches. And then I actually found a certain keyboard that I was like, okay, I'm going to get one of these. And then it lets you design your own color keycaps. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, well, that was like one of my evenings gone. Like, one uh, of my evenings just disappeared trying to and I still couldn't decide. So in the end, I was like, okay, I'm not getting one because I don't know what color my keycaps should be. Alright. You've got you you to get the right pattern of keycap colors. Like, <laughs> you're going to use this keyboard every day, man. You can't just have it being wrong. Mm. This is like a serious investment. It is. It is. Alright. All right. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are on Frost. It is up 1-0 for the Blue Terran player. He is Liquid Youth Thermal. I forgot where the, <laughs> I forgot where the rotating keys are. <laughs> no, yeah, those, I, I turned to... up Numlog again. Yeah, Classic but that's fine. mistake. Alright, and down to the bottom right hand side of Frost, it is going to be the Rava Caps' Tomicus. Uh, to the guy in chat asking if this is an online tournament, no, this is an offline tournament. We are here at the Dutch Rank Esports Finals, or the Dutch StarCraft League Finals, if you want to call it that. Uh, Pig was just nice enough to mention this uh, on Twitter. So if is you're really? if you're a Pig fan, shout out to Pig, guys. Yeah, Pig is awesome. Pig's a really nice guy. He just right. loves StarCraft, he just loves everyone. Like Definitely. Cool guy. Alright. Battle cruises again? What do you think? I say yes. Uh, I think he's gonna do it. Uh, the production tab says no. <laughs> oh, he's actually gonna reaper? Yeah. Oh. On well, Frost. Okay, so to be fair, Frost is like the only other map in this map pool where reapers are super good, uh, because it's not as good as Galactic. It's not as good as Frozen, but you do still have like this ledge. Let's go to the Zerg side of things, which obviously make more sense. You have this ledge up here to harass into, which very quickly leads to the natural. You can jump down here as well, which is good. Over here is another escape route. So there's lots of ways in and out with the reaper. And you also have like a secondary ledge to jump down. It's not the best. It doesn't get you to complete safety because then you're in the middle of nowhere. And the lingers can like come around pretty quickly to like surround you. But it's better than any other map compared yeah. to, you know, compared that's... to the other maps. So if you film wants to Reaper, he can still make it work here definitely. It is something that's kind of become a thing. Like people started to do this like maybe a month ago. And Tomikus knows as soon as he sees the racks in the yeah. ground and he sees this, you know, he knows by the time that this is a third barracks, he knows what this is. So he knows what is super early. So what's interesting is, what will his response be? He opened Hatch Gas Pool, which is pretty standard. He's not going to blind counter or anything. He's just going to immediately drop a Roach Roll, which is the right response as well. Don't bother right. with speed. Go into Roaches, like five or six, couple of Ravages. And on this map, with five or six Roaches and a couple of Ravages, you should be able to defend, again, much more easily, because there just isn't as much room to move around. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a good response from Tomicus. Uh, he got a bit lucky that he could that he send his overlord in the correct direction because that just sh shaves off so much more time like you actually discover the ba the barracks building the reapers instead of discovering yeah. the reapers inside so, your mineral line yeah it's um it's actually a very common way to scout as well on uh, frost you always go vertical first because what happens is you reach your opponent's natural first or you reach the natural first and that generally gives going to give you more information more quickly than going like horizontal so it's one of those things where obviously it doesn't work out every time that's why you'll generally see Zerg players send their overlords like vertically first. It's the same on uh, other like four player maps like Whirlwind. You'll always send your overlord towards the um, natural first. Because if your opponent is there as well, you generally want that overlord to be there earlier so you can reposition it before like, you know, like anti air units come out. Yeah. Where, you know, and your second overlord then gets towards the main base, which is going to be fairly safe and that's where you want it to be as well. So Alright. It's a cool little thing to know. So. Things at this point, I feel, are looking good for Tomicus. Like, he's doing everything that he needs to do in order to hold this off. Yeah. But we cannot f we cannot forget, this is Youth Thermal. Like, if there's one player who likes to make a lot of Reapers, it's him. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like... I mean, the problem with Reactor Reap is you can scout it, you can do the right thing, but it's still going to come down to Micro, which is what makes it actually such a solid build to use, you know? Because it isn't always just going to be, oh, I built the Roach and the Ravages, I'm safe now. It's, I really have to play correctly, avoid those mine, you know, grenades from the Reapers. This is really bad. You film on that, oh. we'll never let these Roaches back up to the high ground, because he'll just keep grenading the Ravage. Uh, well, he should do. He yeah, should he indeed. I guess he doesn't want to, I guess he'll just try and... But actually, he's sort of stuck in here. You can yeah. see him, like, trying to find a way out. Um, it's actually pretty tough. He's like taking Yeah, there's only two Ravagers, but he's not really focusing uh, his micro uh, that well. He did take out a few Ravagers, but he lost that quite a few Reapers well, though, there. Like, losing four Reapers? Yeah. Well, it's probably okay, but from the film, you actually just expect it to be a little bit better, right? And actually, again, these links are coming towards. He gets another Reaper kill. Every Reaper you take down really shuts down the, you know, how much this sort of snowballs into your opponent's favor and so on. So. This is really nice, actually. Tomicus is picking off Reapers a little bit of a counter here, trying to pick off a reinforcement Reaper. So that's pretty sweet as well. I mean, it's again little bits and pieces that are starting to add on up here for uh, for Tomicus. So he's starting to push this back. Youth Thermal still building Reapers, but a factory on the way after his expansion. So he's thinking about changing things up. He'll have to move one of these racks if he wants to build items, because otherwise he has no way out later. So 
you know, reactors and tech labs will be on the way soon. But for now, just a few extra Reapers. Yeah, for now, it seems you Thermal's uh, gonna, really going to have to sh uh, shift its focus to containing his opponent and gaining an economical advantage. Or actually, he has one already. He's up 10 workers uh, while, you know, building yeah, a I decently teched army. That's but actually really cool. Uh, and just to point out, because what I think Tomic is going to go for is, like, base this, you know, basically go for a massive counter attack. Yeah. And the thing is, this works if you avoid the Reapers because you get across the map so quickly. It doesn't work when the Reapers are able to delay, which they aren't right now. Uthermal has not realized those Ravagers are out on the map, so that's going to create a very weird situation where Uthermal is going to be completely out of position. Yeah. And those Ravagers and Lings are going to get into the base and they're going to do a lot of damage. Stim will go down, one of these yeah. barracks will be broken down as well. Exactly. I don't know where you actually go from here. Uthermal, you obviously bring the Reapers back, but it's going to take so long and it's going to be so hard to get rid of the Ravagers. So here we go, Ravagers are going to start breaking through. And if you drop those corrosive balls on the tech lab, Stim goes down instantly. His barracks will not live for much longer, and Uthermal has to pull the Reapers back to the top right hand side. Yeah, I think uh, Uthermal's best uh, chance here might have been a base trade or something like that, but he's just going to go and uh, pull back his Reapers in order to defend. But is it already too late? Uh, the Ravagers and the yeah, Lynx are yeah. barging in, and they're taking a head on fight, and Ravagers. <laughs> that could have been nasty. I mean, in a way, he can still. I like this. He rebuilt the front. That's really nice. It slows down the links getting in. These corrosive balls are good as well, though. Uh, you can grenade himself there as he tries to fight the links. This is okay because he can fight these links on their own. He's actually fighting the army, the army separately, which is fine because these ravages aren't doing too much right now. Yeah. And I think slowly he can pick away at these ravages. But the problem is getting into a good position to start doing that. He's actually going to be able to fight from the low ground. Tomika should go over here. Like, yeah. fight these buildings here, these SCVs. Like, corrosive balls, this ramps to these areas. Uh, there's things, things there's like just that. enough reapers to actually fight this head on the problem is like Tomicus has an army supply advantage but it's going to be lings and by the time they get here the reapers are going to be behind a wall again i think uh oh. needs to really he needs to them. really mill yeah. barracks now he's pulling scvs not focusing on his wall at all uh some winner mines are going to help out as well but this might be uh not too bad too good of a trade here for you Thermal, now that these yeah, uh, fine. like these scvs just protecting the lings like his, like, army supply uh, I mean, is way down, but, like, SCVs, he can afford to lose some SCVs as well, right? That's he's thing. losing a lot, though. He's yeah, he has actually losing a lot more Reapers than I thought. Again, like, his grenades have been a little bit off this game. He just in general, he's felt like, in general, like, earlier, his mic was a little bit off as well. He's getting rid of a few more units. He has to use those SCVs for position. Wouldn't mind to. He's got the wall off, so he's getting cut in units in half. He's still up by the right. broken camp, plus double mule. He's his, his economy is actually okay here. He gets rid of one last Ravager. He lost 30 workers. And he's still ahead in workers. That's how old yeah. the atomic is. <laughs> That's like, this very is true. really bad for him, I think. Man. Well, these games are back and forth all the way, all the time. I love it. You know, Tomicus, as afraid as he was of Reapers, still managed to do a pretty good job. But he just made this one big mistake, or this one small mistake, which was, I guess, uh, you know, he kept fighting against these Reapers with his Ravagers, where he could have done so much more economic damage. I wonder what, you can see like uh, Tomicus, he has always had more army, but he's always been behind in income, right? And that's just like a typical all-in sort of situation. I wonder if you film actually can hold off the next attack, because Tomicus just made 10 more roaches, and now they're going to start moving across the map as well. That actually might be the tough part here for you film, because he really still doesn't have very much army supply. He's going to start building a reactor on the factory. Like, I feel as though he should have tried to get a tank out like ages ago. Yeah. It's tough though, because like Ravagers can take down tanks so quickly. This is really hard for you, Femmel, because like four, four Reapers now don't have the grenades he needs. So this is really tough, as you can see, like, he's running around the links on their own, not too bad. Widermine goes off, cleans up a few links, but the roaches are still going to be the major issue here. Yeah. If you feel can get enough Marines out, then great, but... Well, uh, he does have a, you know, a good wall, but for how long? Oh, and the Liberator is going to help, but yeah. Ravagers are pretty effective against that. I think mean, you asked the right question, for how long? Like, this uh, Rax goes down, so cancelled again, I mean, that's not immediately an issue. Liberate goes down also though, he's gonna just... Oh, he's gonna take life. it down. Yeah, I mean, the bunker goes down as well, he can't save that, and... Again, you can look and afford to lose a few workers, but if his production gets shut down, then he's not building any other units, and then he's in a major bit I... of trouble. Medifax will definitely help out with this, and SCPs have to be pulled in, obviously. You can gonna lose a lot of workers here, he just doesn't have a marine count to get rid of the roaches and ravages super quick, so... Workers will go down, 23 workers killed already. He is on triple CC, so if he does lose too much... He can sort of still rebuild. Oh, these defense. marines all staying alive is so important for yeah. this fight. You know, he keeps the DPS it, it's constant. It's actually, because it means that you can like counterattack with the marines. And that means, yes, he's on six SCVs, but again, triple CC rebuild. And he's going to pick up and go. Yeah, no? He's actually going to send the Widowmines. This is really yeah. smart as well, because it's at least going to force a spore crawler. And you'll probably get at least two drones with, you know, while the Widowmines burrow and while the spore crawler builds. And so, that's already like four workers dead. 
and that's like one minute of SCV production he's behind in now. So it's oh, really is he going to drop on top of that Ravager? I would have loved for him to, to, to make a move like that. Yeah, and the problem is the Lings are here, right? So he just loses a bit too much on the way. Where do mines go off? Three workers. But again, now Spores build as well, and that brings yeah. Tomicus down to like 15-ish workers. This medevac's gonna go back home, so the Widowmines are gonna be stuck over there. He's really trying to get rid of this Ravager, man. This Ravager's being such a Oh, here we go. Uh, this is okay, he managed to drop before the links come in, so that works out. I yeah. mean, as, as much as Euphemus has lost, I'm still believing like he's in a decent position. Triple Mule is gonna power him through, like... How much he's gonna be money okay. does he have left in his main? Because at some point his main is gonna mine out, but the same is gonna go for Tomicus. I mean, it doesn't really matter for now, because he yeah. doesn't have, like, an economy Full saturation, to saturate, yeah. saturate, right? Tomicus will be in a bit of a worse position, but still, he also doesn't have an economy to saturate. So mine out the main bases. Oh, this is going to be. Uh, I, I mean, think Tomicus this is going to be. Attack again, but he's going to attack into so many marines this time. Yeah, still no stim, and I don't think there's that many marines. I think the widow mines uh, might actually play a bigger, play a bigger role. There's 80 marines against like seven roaches, four ravagers. He's going to cancel I mean, stim again. Want to get, yeah, he's going to cancel stim again. The stim is just not meant to finish. This oh. Way. I oh, repair! Like repair! Be, uh, yeah, oh! Um, SCVs will have to tank again, right? Yeah, definitely. So Liberator might thing. help. Oh, he's got a Liberator too. The uh, thing is, now there's only four Ravages. I yeah. mean, it takes three Ravage shots to kill a Liberator, but he might just be able to kind of um, really not hit them because, like, the Liberator will be so far back. So it's actually going to slow him down a lot. I really feel the Liberator in the mines are more of a delay than actual something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like just oh. slowing him down. You feel the pain. We're going we're gonna to see this type of play all fight long, basically. Yeah, I actually don't like how many Ravages there is here. Like, I mean, corrosive battles are nice, but Ravages die so quickly. Like, yeah. super, super quickly. So I actually think... I, mean, I think I sound super biased in this cast. So really many Marines here. Euphemia, and I'm like, man, it doesn't matter. He's fine. And I actually genuinely believe that because I just think, like, when you look at this overall, Euphemia will more or less make the whole kites away from the corrosive battles. SCVs go down, but he's still got triple heal. He's still got the ability to rebuild so easily. You know, after this, like, going to just down right now isn't really that much of a this, deficit. This whole fight would have been so over with Stim, but he's just going to lift the CC so he gets more surface area to get closer to the Ravagers. Uh, now more reinforcements streaming in for Tomicus. Uh, he keeps making him as well, and he's managed to contain Euthermal to one base uh, by denying this natural. But <laughs> really, what is the move that Euthermal needs to make? Or does he even have to? Because now Tomicus is once again the one pushing in, killing his own circling, I losing another Ravager. I think Tomicus is the one that has to make something happen. Yeah. I guess Euthermal needs to get down the ramp at some point. But I mean, he's got a little bit of time. Well, he's, I mean, he's only got nine workers, so he's still like mining like more or less okay in the main base. No Stim. That's the whole thing. With Stim, this fight would have been so over. Yeah, maybe Tomicus is good here now that Euphemal can't actually take another base. Where's his third? Yeah, I was going to say, he must have a third base. Oh, he's going to spot it. Yeah, that's going to help a little bit, but the Zergling finds oh, the mules Oh, is there. he going to move out of his natural? Yeah. This is tough, like... It's tough for Rove. Like, where did the Liberator go? I'm wondering... Did he lose it? He lost it. You know, Euphemal has four medivacs. Can't he just... Ooh, ooh, that hurts. He has four medivacs. Can't he just pick up a couple marines and go towards... Yeah, he would probably get crushed at the main, though. But uh, a drop might actually be very effective. I just think he feels like he needs absolutely everything. Like, yeah. and I feel two or three marines aren't going to do enough to even like deflect a you know, kill a queen or anything. You know, so that's really tough. He's almost just going to sit in the main, which is the right, sort of the right decision until he gets enough. But he's going to now mine it very soon, which makes life difficult. Widow mine on burrows. That's really nice. Nice, good see. control over your thermal, yeah. saving that widow mine. This is tough. Like army supplies are even. He's starting up stim for Finally the stiff. fourth, fifth time this game. It's it's so interesting because Tomicus is also not able to take a third quite yet. I think he's sending drones out right now. Oh, he's actually rebuilt most of his drone count. He's back up to 24. Yeah, he just did that uh, very recently here, right? He just like rebuilt a couple extra workers. But, I mean, I guess if he keeps you thermal in his base right. somewhat indefinitely, he will the win. But the problem is that like, the siege shank, but I don't think this tank's going to be able to do much because the ravages uh, will just take it down. So Liberated quickly. didn't do much either. Yeah, right? Like, it's the same idea, like, you just come in, call on a force to get, like, three barrels off, and the tank dies, and then what, like... Yeah. Then you're just in trouble. More Ravagers walking in. He's really going hard on the Ravagers. I still don't like having too many Ravagers, because I feel as though having a few roaches in front definitely does help to buy some time in time. Yeah, Especially these... when there's no Marauders in the army. He actually has double engineering bay, but he hasn't researched right, any yeah, upgrades out of him. Had... He built this, like, way ages ago. Like, he's yeah. had no chance at all to make this happen. Do anything with the engineer base. The thing is, he's gonna get stim, and once he gets stim, he it's actually still... has a pretty decent army. And he's gonna drop a couple units down here to help protect his base. Yeah. So he's actually muling. So actually, the income for Euphemal is gonna start pulling back a little bit here in the next few moments. You can see that's starting to happen on the graph. Um, oh, again, he's gonna pick like, up and defend. Yeah, he, he has to, right? He has to be able to come over here and defend this. A lot of links are uh, gonna come over here. You're all gonna back away from the Biles. Uh, this tank's gonna have to reposition as well. Actually, the third base might go down if yeah. he files it. 
pretty close. I mean, he can SCV repair, though. He has enough SCVs nearby, so that's okay. Tank on the high ground is going to be really useful. Now, I don't like this Atomicus. I, he can't kill those SCVs. Yeah, he almost focused so on Ravagers there. I don't believe he's actually going to get stuck in this game. That's crazy. Like, for the number of times he's going to, you know, he's tried to start this up. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's a lot of Ravagers, though, at this point, you know? He's going to live in his middle barracks. He should oh, move man. this back to the reactor, but I guess at the same time, he doesn't have the income to support Tomicus that is finally starting a third hatchery. How many of his bases are actually mining at his, this point? Well, Nothing in the main, out, but he only plenty has in the natural. Workers, so he's not even that oversaturated on his natural, which is like oh, crazy. Oh, he's going to take more damage. No, he dodges the bowel shots with the uh, third base. doing this really well. Like, he's oh. mining again on the third base. Tomicus is struggling just to kind of split the units up right. And now, you film comes down to the low ground to some extent. He does have stim, right? So he stims, he actually fights a few links. Yeah, and this increased mobility is going to give him so much more space to actually fight uh, yeah, against this both of them. really nice because you thought, well, Stim Marines kill everything in this army Atomicus. Like, yep. you know, they kill like Ravagers because they have no armor. He probably wants combat shields as well, though, because the yeah. Ravagers do do a lot of damage. So if you have a little bit of extra tankiness, it'll help out a lot. It'll go a really long way. Uh, I can't believe he's actually managed to secure his natural and a third at the same time. But this might be the killing move. He's going to stim forward. No, he's going to dodge it. All right. Atomicus still has good presence on the map. This is definitely still like a game that can play out in either way. It's just what does Ethan will do is he first card to catch oh. these Ravagers. That's going to be the difference. Now you can start to do that, you know? So yeah, he has now... good medivacs, and the thing is these medivacs are so high on energy, he exactly. doesn't really need that many more of them right now either. So this is really okay for kills another overlord. Anything you can cause Tomicus to rebuild right now is great. But he still has triple SCV production, like his economy, like, again, I look at his income tab. Tomicus has been <laughs> it's ahead, back and forth, back but it's not been that ridiculous yeah. ahead, you know? You know, it would have actually been more even, I think, if he'd been dropping meals consistently. That's maybe, like... Well, one of the things that obviously Tomicus could force him not to do, so that's... I, I would really like to see Youth Thermal go for 1-1 one, one upgrades. He's so bio fo heavy focused anyway. Right, but and I he's mean, got the blend. He, okay, as I, I mean, say, he starts plus one attack. Yeah, I mean, but I don't think he can afford plus one armor as well, necessarily. Yeah. Like, I think he has to be very careful that like, he does keep making units, because Tomicus is going to keep making units as well, because I think he really knows, like, he has the presence on the map, he doesn't want to throw that away for nothing. So I really feel as though that's something he wants to do here. We're going to see this Ling Ravager. Oh, he's got oh. a good position here on the third. Might actually be able to kill quite a lot of SCVs here. Nice Vials here managing to force the bio away. Uh, does a lot more damage. Might actually do even more on the command center, but no, for uh, now. repair the CC. He's going to take a few more shots, but that's about it. The Ling uh -oh. is here again. He's going to step in away. At this point, though, Euphemal can just drop around. Yeah, There's this is what I was waiting wait for. for. Yeah, right, because, you know, all game we're like, man, if he can get across the map, he pulls Atomicus back, and he's fine. But he couldn't afford to, because the you know, threat of Atomicus actually committing in is just too high. So, this is really, really nice, uh, I think, for uh, okay. Euphemal. Like, this is exactly what he needs, because now this entire army comes back home. It costs <laughs> Euphemal one Marine, and all of a sudden... His army back at home is great, he can buy time to get 1-1 one, one up, and he knows in this game he's ahead in tech, so eventually you film comes out ahead, like, he's done everything right here. And the thing is, I don't think Tomicus did anything wrong. No. I just think these sort of weird situations really do favor the Terran if the Zerg doesn't kill him straight away. Yeah, and if, if he has godlike control like you Thermal. Yeah. That's definitely a factor uh, <laughs> in this game, I would say. Um, yeah. yeah, I this think Tomicus um, kind of has to go for a bit of a one last push, he's uh, kind of... Darting back and forth with uh, with circlings, but gets uh, pounced down I mean, quickly. Yeah, I mean, Once again, the drop. Like oh, he's gonna get the medifact though, I think. Oh, no, uh, one shot. Medifact is so broken. This tank will go down over here to the files. That's always the problem playing against Ravagers now. You can't pick the tanks up. As oh. the thermal should just be able to straight up fight this. Like, you know, Ravagers, they die super fast. So yeah. it's away. You can just see how fast the Ravagers are disappearing. And you thermal is taking a fight to really put an end to this. He still steps forward. Yeah. Back for the first time he's focusing in the game. them down. GG. <laughs> You turbo. Terran, man. Six Kills. city. Terran. All this nonsense. Broken. Broken race. Broken game. Nah, I mean. Salt. It was. No, no, no. It was super well played by you. I know. Like, it was sick. That's one of those games where most of us just like. Okay, he's got like 10 Ravagers. Kill him, Stim, like three times. He's literally killed me. Like, I'm dead. Like, GG's. I love um, games like this. I love casting. Yeah, it's crazy. That's the thing. It's it's such a tough one to call. But I think all the way through there, you have to just look at this. Like, you film is still alive with three CCs. He's got mules. Like,. You know, I think he's... Uh, he's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. Like, It's such a weird thing to cast because everyone, you know, when you look at it, you're like, well, like, how does he even play? But you've got to, you know, look at so much behind this as well. Like, there's so much to look at behind it, so... All right. Okay, well, that was a pretty sick game. Six series, two. Youth Thermal wins it 2-0. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, hopefully we'll be back with another yeah, game just as soon as we were in this one.